Welcome back to The Gist of It. We're Nick and Adriana coming to you from the Great White North on Attawandran land. We are a 45 to 60 minute podcast based around health and wellness. We talk about some myth debunking, fun facts, and topics such as self-care, sustainability, and anything in between. Episodes air every Wednesday at 9 a.m. So sit down, get comfy, and enjoy the show. Good morning, everyone. Today is July 15th, and welcome back to The Gist of It. Uh, Today, we are really excited to be um, kind of heading back towards our normal content and to start off with a topic that is near and dear to both of us. So with that, we'll be talking about personal hygiene products and how common chemicals that are in them are harmful to our bodies and how we can best identify those and move towards a cleaner lifestyle. So a couple months ago, we talked a little bit more about, or we started with this topic and we focused more on the beauty end of it. Um, We also talked a little bit about sun care and how that's involved in the sustainability of uh, cosmetics. But today we want to talk about personal hygiene because those are products we use every day, like deodorants, shampoos, conditioners, and are often our largest exposure to all these really toxic things that we should not be putting on or in our bodies. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so to just kick things off a little bit, um, I, I mean, this is where my health nerdy background comes in, but I really love knowing a little bit about like the regulation of products because it's so important to understand how our governments and institutions are deciding what is good and what isn't good for us to be using. So basically the short explanation is the fact that in Canada specifically, um, there really hasn't been an update to how cosmetic regulations are done uh, since I'd say 99. And so with that, what that means is most chemical ingredients that we see in cosmetics have never actually been tested for their effects on us as humans or the environment. And to me, like, that's just, that's really not okay to be using this shit and it just be, you know, another toxin that we don't know much about. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it is scary. So because of that, Uh, Many of these chemicals also predate modern environmental controls. So for our like sustainable folks who love trying to be as clean and good to the earth as they can, it's really difficult with a lot of these chemicals because we just didn't have anything in place for guidelines on how these affect our water systems and grounds. But then also as we've become more intelligent about the effects, really haven't done anything about it. Um, So we have some growing up to do in our regulation systems. There are some checks and balances in place that do help, but there are different games that cosmetic companies play in order to get around these. So that could be labeling loopholes and we'll get into that in a little bit, but yeah, we just, we're a little archaic and it's time to update. It makes me think of like, of um, the people who regulate these chemicals do they use the products that also have these chemicals or do they use alternatives like we're going to talk about? But yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question because like they should know better. But right. then it's also like, that's rude. Why are you helping yourself out but letting the mass population just suffer? Yeah, that's uh, always thought about that. I don't understand. I don't know. I want to know. Yeah. So if anyone has an answer to that. (laughs) Yeah, let us know. But yeah, so some of the loopholes that you can see in the regulation of cosmetic um, products or personal hygiene products are the fact that some products are actually labeled as not being covered under the cosmetic regulations of Health Canada, but will be marketed as a cosmetic. Um, So specifically with personal care products, there are a wide variety that are regulated under the Food and Drug Act here in Canada because they're considered to have a therapeutic function. So whether that's like your antiperspirants to prevent sweating, face creams, anything with an SPF in it, um, toothpaste or hand sanitizers. But then there's other products that will claim to do these same therapeutic um, functions without actually having the approval to do so. And then there's also just the whole like can of worms about products that are regulated as natural health products. So they 
are completely or they're mostly natural in their ingredients list which as a caveat does not mean clean necessarily um, that have a therapeutic function but are regulated differently so it, you know it's just like a really hot mess trying to navigate this space which is why we're here with some fun facts and info on how to be better with your clean beauty <laughs> the um, like household products that are labeled clean when in reality these companies can literally just make their own label that says clean or green and it means nothing yeah there's no on that yeah it's like the idea of like dermatologically tested well great that you did that but that just means you put it on skin that doesn't mean that a panel of dermatologists have said oh my gosh this is the best product you should be using exactly so yeah it's really interesting so with that Adriana, would you like to talk about some of the ingredients that are most commonly found in these products? Yeah, so there is a, um, a thing called a dirty dozen um, within the tens of thousands of chemicals used in these personal care products, but there is a top 12 that are most used, and uh, we just wanted to list five of them, but we will give you links that will provide you with more information on these and the top 12. But uh, some of them, just for some food for thought, uh, are formaldehyde, releasing preservatives, um, parabens, which most of us know about, um, perfumes, um, which can, you know, trigger allergies, asthma, but they can lead to neurotoxicity and cancer problems. Um, Petroleum, and um, anything that has like um, PEGs. So these are used in like cream bases uh, that can cause cancer. So yeah, the top 12 are pretty scary and they're most used and it's learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Basically like over time, you that you use these chemicals anything you put on your skin basically is going to end up in your bloodstream so the way you should think about it is would i eat this if i could eat it and if no then literally just don't put it on your body um and basically what happens when these things go these chemicals go into your bloodstream is that your body doesn't have um enough enzymes to break them down because they're kind of like foreign substances and your body isn't made to break down these chemicals so one when they build up that's when sicknesses can occur so that is why it's important to look out for these chemicals and obviously we can't track the tens of thousands of chemicals that there are but if you at least can look at the top 12 and watch for those because they're the most used then you're on the right track yeah like I think a really good perspective is the fact that like your skin is literally your largest organ. And yes, it's an organ. So I think I read somewhere that like your skin's 22 square feet or something if you were to like spread it all out in a sheet, right? Which is so gross to think about. But that's a lot of surface area to be poisoning yourself slowly with these different toxins and chemicals. And it's just, it's scary because like, yes, we're living a hell of a lot longer than most generations before us. But at the same time, we're living longer lives at the cost of like medical intervention when we fall ill with Mm -hmm. different, you know, mutations or diseases or cancers due to the products that we're being told are good for us. It's just like, it's not cool. No. And I felt like really in the dark about this until recently. And I'm kind of mad at the establishment for leaving us in the dark so long. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, like they're just, I don't know, these chemicals, just the way they compound on each other. I, it's hard to wrap your head around it, really. It's hard to wrap your head around the fact that they're okay to be in anything that humans put on their body. Like, I just, why does there need to be alternative products? The alternative products should be the main products that you're using and the main products that are made accessible to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, like we were just talking about this, how it's basically like, you'll see some big brands coming out with like a more pure 
somewhat clean line because it's like here we're, we're going to keep pushing the stuff that we normally sell because the mass majority doesn't have a clue what's going on but for all you people that are woke here like take this and you can use it and shut up and don't affect us and we're here being like no no, no we're not going to be quiet about this because our friends and family need to know um yeah yeah so within the dirty dozen they this article that we've got our information from which we will share with you um it lists the um the highest number of dirty dozen ingredients reported in any product was seven <laughs> which is scary <laughs> <laughs> and i'll just list for you a couple of the ones that are on this uh very long list which probably isn't the full list most likely um so the first culprit would be bath and body works um and this doesn't include everything that they sell this is mostly this is in particular it's the antibacterial moisturizing hand lotion um bubble baths uh, specifically their sweet pea body lotion and their warm vanilla sugar hand cream. So again, the creams are what have those like PEGs in them. Um, Caprina, which is fresh goat's milk body wash, which we thought was good, but apparently is not. Um, Clarins um, day cream and what else we've got? Dove Men and Care Clean Comfort Body and Face Wash. Um, but let's be real, we know that mostly all men's hygiene products have so many chemicals in them, it's disgusting. Yeah, but um, even my partner uses that. Like, I know. His family is in skincare and he uses Dove. I'm like, come on. Um, uh, what else? We have L'Oreal Kids Shampoo. Woo! Love that for the children <laughs> oh man what else we've got oh lubriderm advanced moisture therapy which is what every tattoo artist recommends you put on your skin which is super sick because i've used lubriderm my whole life because of eczema um all that and some neutrogena deep cleaning invigorating ultra foam cleanser 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 <laughs> English. Which again is surprising because like I've always been a Neutrogena girl growing up. I found their products were like because I have eczema too, right? So like I found they were really they were deep enough to clean like the gross oils out of my skin, but wouldn't strip them so badly that my eczema would flare up. And I know that that's only one of their lines, but still, if their like deep cleaning invigorating line has issues, then I'm sure other ones do. Yeah, like their other stuff could have six instead of seven yeah ingredients and yeah this is just a list of things that have seven or more so yeah yeah and like this list has a wide variety of like you know creams and lotions to shampoos body washes but even like hair styling products so your hairsprays which is like a whole other can of worms we could probably do an entire episode on uh that with dry shampoo but that that can be another day um but yeah, and then like, of course, unfortunately, Vaseline is on that list, um, specifically their hand and nail conditioning hand lotion. I mean, petroleum jellies had its marks over the years when you think of like the traditional Vaseline product, but it is what it is, right? Yeah. These things that our parents told us were so great because that's what was marketed to them. And now we're just learning too much. Yeah. 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 I find myself at least once a week telling my mom, like, don't use this product anymore. Here, I'm going to buy you a new one. That's better. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So over the weekend, like last, no, two weekends ago, um, my aunt had like a, a girls weekend. And so it was like all the aunts who live in Canada and the nieces, because there's less than 10 of us. We were able to like be a bubble um, and we, we got on the topic of multi-level marketing schemes because a couple of my aunts use some skincare products uh, from an MLM company. And I, I'm not going to name names because we have a family friend who sells it and I don't want to call her out on a podcast. But basically, like I was having this really in-depth conversation with my aunts being like, I get that you had acne problems growing up. Like my one aunt um, has dealt with cystic acne her whole life. And so obviously like 
the negative stereotypes of having acne and like how that makes you perceive your own beauty it is really hard on somebody mentally speaking but like obviously you want to do it in the cleanest way possible and and because of their age they were basically like yeah but like a you're blessed with having great skin so you don't have to worry about it and b we've been doing this our whole lives and like we're in a position where they want to be vain enough about the fact that they worry about what their skin looks like that they're willing to sacrifice their health for the comfort of being stereotypically beautiful by not having acne and it just like it blew me away that they're ready to just throw the towel in because that's what they were brought up learning like oh you can't have acne oh acne is embarrassing oh it doesn't matter what's in it as long as it fixes it so i was i was sad don't worry i'm learning i'm figuring out how to convert them i'll slowly convert them to better products <laughs> but yeah I mean, MLMs are notorious for marketing themselves as clean and beautiful and pure when you know it's like nothing but lowest grade ingredients. They're just really great with their marketing teams. A lot of the um, multi-level marketing things, like the cosmetic ones, at least I don't, a lot of them say like, oh, we're natural and whatever, but they still have so many chemicals in them and it's just like how do you market yourself as natural products meanwhile your list of ingredients still has half these ingredients you can't even pronounce i don't yeah. understand yeah and like just to go off on a tangent for a second like even just from a food and nutrition aspect like first of all i don't know any company who does cosmetic slash personal care products and nutrition well and then you know so they not only are like directly or indirectly poisoning us i don't know what their mo is through their like applicable products they're also selling us these nutritional products that are not anything good for you like i mean there's one that sells these like fizzy drinky things and they're like loaded with citric acid like how is that good for you Great that it fizzes, but like you can drink sparkling water. Citric acid. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Great. That has zero nutritional value for you, but go ahead, drink it with some flavor. Like last time I checked, you could squeeze a lemon in just sparkling water. <laughs> so like we could literally talk about that for hours. It's it's yeah. It's kind of a cult. You can't really fix it. So just stay clear, please. Don't fall into it. Yeah, no. Um, um, so um, another thing I do want to talk about, because if you use these products on a daily basis, even on a daily basis, but once a month, um, you should know this information. So with that, we're going to talk about pads and tampons. Yeah. Um, because these are things that have direct contact with the most probably vulnerable skin on your body and just like a direct, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Entry? Yeah, like direct entry into your body. So. In more of the ways than one. Yeah. So, um, on average... A uh, person who uses feminine fem hygiene products uses 16,800 tampons in their lifetime. That's just tampons. Whoa. Um, or up to 24,360 if on estrogen replacement therapy. The more you know. That's a lot. <laughs> um, Whoa. Yeah, exactly. I'll just let that sit in for a second. Um. So basically, the companies who create pads and tampons aren't required to disclose ingredients because these products are considered quote unquote medical devices. So they kind of have like a get out of jail free card because they are considered hygiene products. Um, and a fun fact is that conventional pads so the ones that you would get just like the white cotton pads like always or something or kotex whatever 
Um, they contain the equivalent of, are you ready for this? <laughs> Four plastic bags! Oh God. Is a hazard in itself because we know all the chemicals that go into plastic bags. Um, and they also contain uh, bleaching chemicals to make the pads white. So even though they can be called quote unquote cotton, um, they still bleach them. And a lot of pads have that, that coating on top of it. That's like a, it's like a plasticky coating, which makes them like super stiff. Which still blows my mind to this day that they're still made like that because of the most uncomfortable thing in the whole entire world. I know. Right. Like, I don't know. They just don't form to your body. Like, it's like, putting a piece of paper down there. Like what? I don't understand. Why do you think that works for us? Like, first of all, we're not flat. Second of all, we need to move and be able to do what we want. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so the other concern with pads and tampons when they are made out of cotton is the potential, the potential, the, the, the potentials of um, GMOs being absorbed into our bodies because cotton, the cotton industry uses the, uh, I think $2 billion in pesticides a year spraying cotton fields. So that's another hazard. Um, it's just these things, these hazards shouldn't exist, especially for like these products specifically because of where they sit. Um, and we all know like, toxic shock syndrome is a thing and which is a cause of these chemicals like literally like on the package it says please do not leave this in for a long period of time because there are chemicals in this that could give you shock and you might die but it's fine you're gonna be fine like no this shouldn't even be a disclaimer on a freaking hygiene package yeah it's really difficult because like you know so let's go back to like the cotton issue so like recently some companies have come out with like these organic cotton lines and so those are a win somewhat because like some of them are vowing to like not use dyes or fragrances or chlorine bleach so like right there that's a win because you're eliminating a handful of chemicals that you don't want to be absorbing into your body but then, you, you know, you talk about the pesticides and like GMO issues. So that is also an issue. Um, but like, you know, your like applicable products, so like your creams and all that, there are lines that are really great for folks who are not interested in using like alternatives altogether. Because I know um, reusable products can be a little scary. I mean, we've been bred to only use uh, disposable products for generations upon generations like that is all we are taught right hygiene thing and it's just like there that's the that's the you know quote normal way to be hygienic yeah. right when realistically like you know hygiene means you, you're cleaning yourself so why can't hygiene be in, implemented into pa like reusable pads which are a thing now and those are still hygienic you use them and you wash them it's like it, yeah, yeah. It's just, i think the definition of hygiene needs to be redefined yeah especially for products like this well even like so we're talking about pads and tampons which are obviously applicable to like folks who menstruate but think about diapers that are used on all babies and infants like when my parents were growing up disposable diapers were expensive you cleaned at home and you used disposable only when you were leaving the house unless you were like super wealthy and that's how you wanted to live but nowadays disposable is the only option that people are using and like a super wasteful but b think about the chemicals that are in those being absorbed by a new baby human in this world yeah like you know their their entire life starts from ground zero with chemicals being absorbed into their bodies and they're like they're most susceptible to it and i was actually thinking about this specifically the other day um because i think i saw someone post that they use um reusable diapers and at first i was like oh my god i can't even I can't even imagine. I don't even know how you 
<laughs> what? Bring yourself. To- <laughs> Like, I have seen some bad diapers, okay? Like, when my siblings were babies and just, like, destruction. Oh, no from me. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I want to be able to, you know, eventually when I do have kids, like, I, the first thing you want to do is obviously protect them. So it's like, how can, how can you do that to the best of your abilities? And I guess that's one of them would like just deal with it. I guess. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think that goes back to the, like, I guess notion in society of how bodily functions are like absolutely disgusting. I mean, don't get me wrong. Nobody wants to smell a stinky poop, like especially babies that are fresh. Like they, they're just disgusting. My sister, she was disgusting as a, as a child, but if we learn to normalize, like the way that we're working to normalize menstruation and, you know, if somebody spots or like bleeds through, not reacting with horror, but being like, oh man, like that sucks. Let me help you. Like, you know, let's protect your pants or clean you up, whatever. We could probably do the same thing around children and maybe just maybe we'll be able to shift our generation to do it like the old fashioned way where we're using reusable diapers again, because I mean, fashion's in a time warp right now. So why can't personal hygiene products be in a time warp? Well, they also make, you know, if you don't want to use the reusable pads, you could also, there's, there's like, there's been a blow up of companies now making um, underwear that is oh yeah periods, which I want to try really badly. I just, you know, don't have the money for it right now, but eventually like I've heard only good things. So. And then of course there's like menstrual cups with lots of companies coming on the market, which is really great because now it's making it more competitive. I mean, I remember like when Diva cup first came out, because I think they were the The first first on the market. They were like upwards of 40 bucks in Canada, which that's expensive to be taking a leap of faith on. So if you can get something for like, you know, low twenties, that's no different than buying a box of tampons and a, and a container of pads because they're also expensive. So that's like one month of trying it and you either like it or you don't. Yeah. The one thing I do want to say with the, like if you do go the route of getting a cup, um, you need to try it for at least three months because they say that that's how long it takes to actually get used to it. Like three full periods of using it because having it using it one time for seven days is just it's not you won't get used to it like it takes longer than that Mm -hmm. um so but like I recommend them and also going back to like the price thing they they do need to start making them more accessible um for everybody but you're paying a one-time fee over a five-year uh, like span of time yeah. um, rather than going to the store once a month and paying that $40 on all of the hygiene products that you need. So in the long run, it really helps. And then um, we also talked about reusable applicators too for tampons. Yeah. Use tampons. So like those are great also um, because it's the, it's the plastic that is – plastic yeah Yeah, like they're like so for me I'm still not fully on the cup wagon like I just I'm not right there with my peeps on the Nuva ring if you're using contraception I think you'll do great on the cup um, because you're already used to doing something every month where you're inserting it yourself but yeah so I found this really awesome company and I will provide the link that sells reusable tampon applicators so you can either buy tampons through them they do like organic cotton tampons not really sure about if they use dyes or anything like that so you'll have to do a bit of research Um, but I use that applicator with the OB organic tampons because all of OB's lines or most of their line is um, applicatorless so you can insert it yourself without an applicator but like, it's uncomfortable because it's like using a paper one, which I was never cool with. Um, so you get this really awesome reusable applicator that you can 
use whatever tampon you want in. Same idea as a Diva cup where you clean it a specific way. And I can't remember how good or how long it's good for. I've had it for like a year and it's not, it's not too shabby. It runs around the same as the um, cup for pricing. It's like, I think I bought it from an American site, which now I regret, but um, there are, I can find a Canadian one for you guys, but I think I paid like 45 Canadian after exchange. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're all so easy to clean, like clean it in the shower. It takes like two seconds. Yeah. And like for, you know, those that are on the fly all the time, like in public restrooms, whatever, I think that's been my, like my biggest hesitancy with the cup. Um, if you know me, I'm like on the go all the time and I'm always at like scummy places with disgusting washrooms. So the cup kind of terrified me, but at least with the applicator, if you can't wash it right away, then you can like put it in the cute little case that it comes in and wash it when you get to a place that is more clean. Cause like racetracks are disgusting. They're just not cool. So the other thing with the cup too is, um, realistically there's no time limit that you can have it in for but the one thing I will say is that when you do use the cup um you I didn't realize how small the amount of blood you actually lose while you're on your period like there you probably won't fill up the cup I will tell you that right now like throughout your period it will like the equivalent of every time you empty it will not equal the whole thing. Yeah. Which is, just blew my mind. Um, yeah. But like you can keep it in for a full day. Like you can wake up in the morning, say you have like a, you're going out for the day and you obviously don't want to change it. You don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> it's just there. Well, like that's another thing. I like, I have some colleagues who aren't 100% using the cup, like they'll use a tampon for specific circumstances, so whether that's like swimming or whatever. Um, but they use the cup to size themselves properly because like nobody teaches you how to choose what size tampon you want, right? So most people just go for regular assuming that's what they need. And then you find the hard way that you need a super if you're bleeding through it. But many of us could be using just lights and using the wrong size tampon also runs the risk of adverse health effects that you don't want. So like if you're not hundred percent sold on it, but you're going to start to incorporate it, it could be a really great way of learning yeah. what you should be using as the alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, yeah, I think like, I'm really glad we talked about the pad tampon stuff because I think when a lot of people consider clean beauty products and personal care products, they think of like, application they don't think of like physical devices and materials that are just sitting against our skin and yep. pads and tampons are a really great example of how it's literally all around us it doesn't matter if it's a lotion that's being absorbed or just a piece of cotton with plastic sitting against you like it's a problem um uh, so since we're on the topic of chemicals and, and their absorption We'd like to talk about um, a couple different skincare brands that you can kind of switch to um, or substitute for your normal go-tos, uh, which are free of um, the chemicals that we've been talking about or like the, the dirty dozen. Um, and one brand that I specifically want to talk about because the story just, it resonates with me, um, is Indie Lee. And um, first off, I'd like to say that her products are on the higher end of the spectrum, maybe in the middle, they're in, they're in the middle. But again, side note, like this, you're investing in your own health. Um, mm -hmm. But I know it's not affordable for everybody. So there are, um, alternatives that are that cost less money which we will also share with you but personally um indie lee resonates with me because so she created this brand after she survived uh cancer and she it wasn't uh they didn't think that she was going to make it basically and but she came out of it and she survived and she's a warrior and so then she went on this mission to create the brand Indie Lee. And it's 
free of all these chemicals that your body absorbs and again, can't process and then over time build up. So this resonated with me because uh, about nine years ago now, my stepmom lost her battle to um, lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. And the thought was also that it, she, she got it from the product she was putting on her skin. And so this is important to me and this is why I use it. And this is why I, it resonates with me um, because these products that we're putting on and in our body can have some really, really serious effects on us, even in using it in a short span of time. Um, like she wasn't even 40 years old. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a matter of investing in your own skin and your own health and body. So to me, it's worth it to spend the money on. And it's, I put it in my budget because it's, it's there and that's the way it's going to be. So yeah. 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 And then, um, I found, so there's four Canadian companies that I want to talk about because I want to shout out our own amazing peoples who are working on this because like it, it's a lot of work to go up against the giants that exist in this world that are manufacturing in like areas that allow them to pay less in wages and material costs and all that um so um the first one i want to talk about is i, I believe it's pronounced kai naturals um, and all four of these plus indy lee and the other two that we'll talk about after will be linked for you to do your own exploration but so kai naturals is a female powered team um, that strive themselves to be cruelty and sulfate free the one thing i love about this company is that they are striving to be gentle for all skin conditions so they really hit home that like individuals with sensitive skins should be trying their products um, and what i love about their website is they have a whole resource uh, as its own page on the stages of detoxifying your body from harmful chemicals because i know like for myself personally when i switched from using antiperspirants with aluminum in them to just straight deodorants with minimal fragrances I went through some like serious detox issues and I really hated it at first because I didn't understand it. And it took way longer because I didn't know how to support my body on that detox journey. So it's a great resource for those who are like trying to cold turkey, get out of a lot of different products that they've been using their entire lives and switch to a cleaner option. Um, the next company, they're called the Green Beaver Company, which I love their name because <laughs> I love beavers. They're so cute. And they're also just like super fun animals. Um, but I learned about this company because they were featured in the documentary Toxic Beauty, which is a really great resource to start your learning journey. You'll learn a lot about uh, SE Johnson & Johnson, which is obviously a powerhouse in the personal care slash hygiene um, industry. So if you want to learn more, I 10 out of 10 recommend the documentary. Anyways, they featured the Green Beaver Company, which is a husband-wife powerhouse team who founded their company once their son was born and decided that it was time to be using healthy, clean products in their life. Um, and so I really like this company because they don't only focus on products for like um, females and or adults, they, they actually focus on having a line for the entire family. So they have fun, cute products for your kids that are not L'Oreal smoothie shampoos off of Shopper Drug Mart. Um, shelving and also they were the first Canadian cosmetic company to become completely plastic microbead free in 2016 so that's super great for sustainability because that wasn't that long ago and that speaks volumes to how our cosmetic regulations are here in Canada um, and then the last two thing is too like if a small company like that can make that jump why aren't these bigger corporations doing it it's exactly it's just sheer negligence and laziness, in my opinion. Like, there is no excuse for that. Yeah. Um, and then these last two I really want to give a huge shout out to because they are fantastic. So the first one is Squalwin Botanicals. It's an indigenous and female-owned um, company that are focusing on honoring the traditional Squamish plant knowledge. So you can learn lots about their products and their information on their website. And then my 
Last one that I actually have had the pleasure of using uh, their lipstick before. I know that's not hygiene specific, but the lipstick's awesome. Um, it's called Cheekbone Beauty. So it's also an indigenous owned company that are on a mission to create high quality, cruelty free beauty products. So the founder's name is Jennifer Harper. She's seems to be a really cool person, obviously never met her, um, but she stays true to her roots by constantly focusing on how they can evolve their greener goals. So if you check out their website right now, they actually have their plan for how they'll become greener between 2020 and 2023, which is great because a lot of companies do like large scale 10 year plans. And I really like the fact that she's broken it down into like really small baby steps of this is what's going to happen. And I want to give a shout out to the fact that um, through the Cheekbone Beauty Company, you can help support Shannon's, Shannon's Dream, which is a uh, charity who supports access to um, equal education for First Nations children while respecting their language and culture through uh, the purchase of their lipsticks. And you can learn more about that on their website. Cool. Yeah, we also have a list that we'll share with you that includes um, both black and indigenous owned uh, skincare companies that uh, fall under the natural products mm -hmm. um, list. And we will share that with you because there's, there's a list and you don't have to write them down. We'll write them down for you. So, yeah. And then we also just want to recognize the fact that we understand it can be really difficult to completely change up your lifestyle and not have access to these products from local stores. Um, so like, we just want to give a shout out to Tom's, like Tom's toothpaste and deodorant and all their other stuff, as well as Burt's Bees, because they are both two mega corporations that are working and trying their hardest to become better every year. Yeah. So with that, that's our rant for the day. Um, so. uh, I want to share um, my little thing. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday night, um, we, Stephen and I spontaneously uh, rode our bikes to the beach because the sun was setting and the sky was really pretty and it was already like nine o'clock. So the, there was a chance we weren't going to make it. Um, but I was like, let's just go. So we got up and we just went and, um, down the street, we're pretty much down the street from the main pier in Burlington. And, um, it was really busy. So we decided to go like three kilometers more down the path and, um, go to the actual beach. And we just sat there and talked and enjoyed like the sound of the waves and just being outside for two hours. And we didn't even realize we were there until like 11 o'clock and it was just, it was nice to just shut everything off. And again, I understand that that is a privilege, but it was just a reset that I didn't know I needed. And still today I'm feeling like this warm feeling from it because it was just, it was really nice. And yeah, so that's my little thing. That's so cute. I love that. Um, I have a really quick little thing this week, but um, it's been cooling off in Southern Ontario the last couple days, which is nice because the heat wave last week was a little bit ridiculous. Um, but if you don't know me, then you'll quickly learn that fall is my favorite season. And so yesterday morning, it was like a little bit cooler in the morning and walking outside, it felt like what the temperature feels like at the beginning of fall like as you're sort of transitioning out of summer and it was just like such a nice comfortable feeling because I, obviously I love the heat and I love the summer but I'm really excited for fall because it's like my favorite time of the year I love the colors I love you know the spookiness of Halloween and just the like excitement of seeing family yeah. because holiday season's coming and all that so me too it just gave me a little boost because I know the heat's going to come back, but at least it's cooler for the time being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So with that, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, send us a message, email us, whatever. Share topic suggestions. If you have a little thing that you would like us to feature either on our Instagram or on the podcast, please send it our way. 
because it's as much for us as it is for you. Yes. And with that, have a happy hump day. Yay. <laughs>